300 million people, 300 million people are sufferers of type 1 diabetes around the world. As we know, this disease is caused by the autoimmune destruction of pancreatic insulin cells. There's no way to bring them back. There are very few treatments that are available, and mostly they are ineffective. A person with type 1 diabetes is going to have to live with that for their whole life. There has been no hope up until now. With this research, led by Doug Melton, a man whose two children are type 1 diabetic, they have found a way to develop working beta cells that react to glucose and secrete insulin just like a regular pancreatic cell. My name is Liliana Rodriguez and today I will be talking to you about exactly how they did this and how they made sure they were on the right track. So some previous research that was done, they were on the they were doing the right thing. But as you can see on this chart here, these are the different stages of cell differentiation. And in the center there, you can see the different things that they added in. And the problem here is that these efforts only got up to this point. They were not able to get to this functioning beta cell. And the reason why that was was because these cells that were developed, they wouldn't secrete insulin. They were underdeveloped. They didn't express the right markers to tell the researchers that, hey, I'm a beta cell, or um, they developed other abnormalities that wouldn't let them be functional. Now, what this group did was use this previous, these previous efforts and take them to the next level. So on this, this is kind of the, the method that they used. Um, so they used tissue culture blasts using embryonic stem cells and used that same, that same method that the previous efforts had used. But when they got to that point, they added in different things by guess, of course, and took the cell in a different direction. Now this direction that they were going towards was, of course, the functional beta cell. And how they tested to see if that beta cell was functional or not was that they conducted an ELISA test. Now this ELISA test was to see how much, if at all, insulin was being secreted by these cells. Now after they found that these cells were functional, they then went in vivo and transplanted these cells into diabetic mice and measured the results of that as well. So in this next slide here, you can see the results from the in vivo, I mean in vitro, excuse me. So this is not a live cell subject. This is inside the culture flasks. As you can see here, we have two control groups. This is, an, um, yeah, and then the test group. So this first control group is the cells from the previous effort. We know these don't work. We know for sure that these cells are non-functional. This next group are from human pancreas. This is a, these are human pancreatic cells that are functional. We know for sure that these are going to react to glucose and secrete insulin. And the one on the end there, that is the test cells, those are the test cells that develop beta cells by this group, and we are measuring here in units of insulin being secreted versus the amount of glucose being given to the cell. Now as you can probably see, we have different amounts being given at, in between 30 minute intervals, and the reason that they did this was to see whether the test cells were just going to turn on or whether they were just going to turn off, because they need to know that. Otherwise, um, there's it's not a good idea to transplant those cells into anything alive if that could be helpful. So this is what they were testing. And as you can see, 
the results from the developed beta cells and the human pancreatic cells that are functional are very extremely similar. Now this is the point when they decided to take the experiment in vivo. And so on this next slide, you can see the results from that. Now this was a huge thing because this process took only two weeks. Two weeks in between transplantation and the testing of the, the pancreatic cells. This is because the previous efforts that had um, inserted unfinished cells into mice, it took four months for those cells to differentiate into something that was functional. And the researchers couldn't tell what exactly was happening inside the mice during that time. This is something that they, you don't, that they didn't need to transplant not knowing what it was doing or what, what it was. And so after only two weeks, we see that the, the insulin here being measured versus mouse number. Oh, and of course, um, the white bars are the, that time zero. So that's when, right when the insulin or the glucose was being given. And then the black bar, that was 30 minutes later. So they're measuring the amount of insulin being produced. And the difference in between those, that's what they were measuring. And as you can see again, we have the three control groups. We have the non-functional, we know those don't work. We have the functioning pancreatic cells from the human that we know work. And these are the test cells, that the developed beta cells. Now, as you can see again, although they are very similar, we do see a correlation in between the two categories. And so with these results, we can say that this group of researchers led by Doug Thompson have developed a pathway towards a very good treatment and even a cure for this disease that is infecting 300 million people worldwide. Now, what exactly are the implications of this sort of research? Of course, there are the great things, you know, making new ways to treat people who are suffering and finding new ways to treat diseases that we don't know a lot about. But another thing that we do need to talk about that is needed to be thought about are the ethics of this sort of research. This research was conducted with embryonic stem cells. And for those of you that don't know, these cells are harvested from human embryos. This is a very controversial subject because there are people that believe that humans are, are we are human at the point of conception. And this is something that we need to decide for ourselves. Every person needs to decide for themselves which is important or which is more important. Should we continue research like this and find ways to help the people that are, the millions of people that are suffering, or do we not? I hope that this research has sparked an interest in stem cell research, or at least caused awareness of the importance of it in, to our society. Thank you very much for your time. Does anyone have any questions?